Hello, live peer community. Welcome to a live stream with Titan Node, the number one place to delegate your stake. Today, we're going to be doing some question and answer uh, from the live peer community. These are questions that uh, I have gotten from Discord and from Telegram and YouTube, and all these great places. So, if you're joining us, great. Hop into chat and ask some questions. Otherwise, I got some here and we will go through them together. So let's get started. The first question, hello Titan. I came across LivePeer researching an idea for decentralized streaming, and I was just wondering if this technology is viable today. Are the costs reasonable and are there enough nodes to build a solid broadcast? So to answer that question, yes, it is viable today. Currently, there are, I believe, 100 orchestrators on the LivePeer network. Um, but I think only about 50 or 60 of them are uh, actively transcoding. So I think the goal of the live peer community is right now to get uh, all 100 orchestrators actively transcoding. But with the current 50 that are transcoding, it's actually a lot more power that they have for transcoding than there are even streams that broadcasters are sending out. So I think there's a lot more that... Um, is available. So any app can actually just hop onto LivePeer, start using it for their backend streaming services. And I don't think there would be a single problem. There's plenty of bandwidth already online. So it's really, really amazing. The next question is, anyone else, anyone else having trouble seeing their LPT in the stake pool on the Explore LivePeer? The LivePeer Explorer, I think would he say. If you're having trouble seeing your stake delegated to the orchestrator, that is fortunate. It probably is just under your account. So if you go and navigate to the left side of the uh, Explorer and hit, um, hit your account, it'll show you how much you have staked and who it's staked with. And if you don't have it staked, like if it's not showing up, chances are you don't even have it staked to begin with. Um, when you do stake, you have to click approve and then stake. So maybe you only hit one of the two things that you need to do in order to stake. I think I made a video about that uh, on, I think it's called live peer staking in 10 minutes. But basically there's two steps to staking. So you got to make sure you follow both um, the approve and the stake. Otherwise it should just be located under your, uh, your account there. The next one is... Do transcoders have to be hosted locally or can they run on GPUs hosted in the cloud? Great question. So there are two ways to run an orchestrator setup and a transcoder. You can do a orchestrator and transcoder setup together on one machine locally. That's usually the best for performance, but there is this other concept of orchestrator pools. So people can connect their transcoders, their GPUs to a pool, and everyone can get work based on how much that orchestrator gets. And that is all pooled together. So kind of a nice way of the orchestrator being able to grow in size and handle lots of different streams and then handing out the work to other people that don't have the technical know-how or desire to set up their own orchestrator. So. You can do just transcoding. And I think live pool right now um, does that. So yeah, I would, I would look at live pool if you're interested in just doing transcoding. And then um, otherwise, yeah, just on one machine is usually the best for performance. What generation of NVIDIA GPUs are recommended? Uh, I have to purchase hardware and wondering what value, if any, there is in purchasing newer, higher powered GPUs opposed to GPUs that are satisfy the minimal requirements. So yeah, I've tested out a whole lot of the GPUs that you need for transcoding on LivePeer. Uh, the 10 series, the 16 series, the 20 series, and the 30 series. So I've tried them all, even the Teslas. I have even tried the Teslas as well, the M60 Tesla. And if you have anything greater than a 10 series, so like a 1070 and up, you're gonna have plenty of uh, bandwidth for or transcoding on the live peer network because there is some performance difference. I think like the 1070 
to the, say, like the 2080, which is what I have, there's a slight, it's slightly faster, especially if you have the overclocked version, like the Super. But overall, any GPU is probably going to do fine as long as, it has, as long as it has the encoding chip in it. I even went out and bought a 3090 and tried it out and benchmarked it, and it did no better than the 2080. And so, I, yeah, you definitely don't need a 3090. It's like way overkill. Yeah, I would just go with like a 10 series. And um, you're going to need at least 6 gigabytes of uh, VRAM. So make sure you get one that has like 6 or 8. Don't get the 3 gigabyte one. Those are no good. Uh, another question. My question is about the path to profitability. I'm, I'm not in this for a quick buck, but I would like to be in this for the uh, fruitful long-term investment. How can I expect the operating costs to change over time? It seems that there is a coin threshold where LPT rewards ellipse, or eclipse the ETH fees and I can start to recover my investment. Any advice would be amazing. So yeah, the path of profitability is interesting um, with LivePeer because it's not like ETH mining. ETH mining, there's a clear outset and schedule of how much you will get in terms of how much hash power you give to the network. So, for instance, if you have you know, a 2080 GPU, you know exactly how much it'll make, and you can calculate that. LivePeer is quite different. It's, it's more like a company because you're, the people paying you for your transcoding service are customers. So how many customers does the LivePeer network have, and how many streams do you receive? Well, that's very dependent on where you're located, how fast your internet is, how many streams you can handle who's adopting the live peer technology, whether it's like web two or web three customers. Um, so it's really tough to say how profitable you'll be. The nice thing is the bar to entry in live peer is actually really low right now. All you need, if you already have a GPU and a gaming computer, then you already have the hardware because any 10 series GPU can do it. And if you have high speed internet, which a lot of people do, then you don't have any additional cost to joining the live peer network. The only thing you need to do is you have to get into the top 100 orchestrator list, which costs, I think, currently six LPT to get there. Like you have to stake to yourself, you have to bond it. So six LPT is about $120 US. So if you've got $120 and already a gaming computer with internet, then you can join the live peer network as an orchestrator. So not just a transcoder, but an orchestrator and run your equipment. So the barrier to entry to join live here is actually very low. How much money you will make? I don't know, it really depends. Titan node in two days with 11660 super earned I think 0.36 ETH in one day. It was about $1,000 the uh, Titan node earned in a day. And then it went two months without earning a single ticket. So it, the thousand bucks over two months maybe is what it roughly comes out to it's it's really hard to say and that was with a 1616 super which is a pretty G cheap gpu so if you've got the equipment and you've got 120 dollars, it's definitely worth checking it but i can't say how much profitability is because it's just like any company how much how much money is a startup going to make we have no idea so you just got to jump in both feet and, and try it out for yourself is there a downside other than cost to running a node in the cloud? It seems that most people are using old PC setups, but I'm um, curious as to what the uh, vCPU RAM SSD is recommended um, for virtual machine hosting and orchestrator slash transcoder. So you're just asking about basically what are the costs and benefits of running a orchestrator in the cloud and then having your transcoder run at home. So it's like an, an O plus T setup, right? So they're separated. And there's really no benefit to doing that right now. Um, you don't really get any more work if you're located closer to the work. And, uh, it's more based on stake, how much work you get. I will say, however, there is like a cutoff. If you're not transcoding in real time, then you won't get work or you won't keep the work that you're getting. And 
you have to be within a certain distance of the ingest node to get the work in the first place. So this is usually like divided up by continents. So if you're in North America, you're probably gonna get North American work. If you're in Europe, you're gonna get European work. And Asia, you're gonna get the Asia work. The, there's too much latency between picking up work in Asia if you're in North America. You're, you're not gonna be transcoding in real time. So you most likely won't get that work. So there's other ways around this, geolocating DNS services, you can do that. So um, it really just comes down to whether you wanna start a pool in which case you'll probably want like a cloud service or if you want to like transcode in different areas of the world. But I, I would just say start with your own for now locally. And oh, and the other reason is if you are behind a, um, a router where there's a hard-coded firewall then you won't be able to uh, run an orchestrator off that because you'll be stuck behind a firewall. And cloud services rarely have firewalls or at least ones that you can override. Uh, another question, does anyone know why it is so expensive to transfer LPT from an exchange to MetaMask wallet? I tried to move 20 LPT to MetaMask, but it feels like 1.2 LPT for the fee is just insane. Does anyone have a better idea to move them cheaply? Unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, some of these exchanges charge pretty high fees to move ERC-20 tokens, and LivePeer is just one of them, right? The gas fees right now are insane. I think yesterday I saw it at 900. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's just expensive to move anything on the Ethereum network right now. So yeah, you just buy more LPT then, I guess. <laughs> uh, I want to switch my stake and didn't know I had to enter zero in another, um, in another orchestrator to do so. Uh, so I had to pay gas fees to restake and move it. By the end, I spent a lot on fees just figuring it out. It would be nice if there was a bit more clear. Actually, I did submit a request, an issue on GitHub to get this fixed. And Adam and the core developers and Yondin also had fixed it already. So now when you go and go to unstake, it, it spec there's, a, there's a warning underneath or at least a message that says, if you're looking to move stake, just press zero, just enter zero, and it'll move a stake to, to another orchestrator. So you don't have to unstake first, which is nice. And then, it, yeah, I think they put that message in a couple other areas too. So I think, I think it's a pretty elegant way they fixed that, but I can see the frustration. I think that was a big problem with some other people who didn't know um, how to move your stake or even that you could move your, your stake from one delegator to another. So, yeah, hopefully... Hopefully that'll help you out for now on. Next question, uh, will you do a video on transcoding? Will you do a video on only transcoding and transcoding video to give you, a, gives you Ethereum, right? Yeah, I could do a video on just transcoding. That's basically like setting up a pool or joining a pool. So rather than becoming an orchestrator, you can just be a transcoder and join someone else's orchestrator. The biggest one right now is live pool and you can just join them with your GPU and like no setup whatsoever. You literally patch your GPU so you can handle transcoding, you have to do that. And then you double click a button and away you go. So yeah, I would join Livepool, I would check that out. I'll run by some great people too, by the way. And we'll do one more question. Question, uh, why are users slash developers slash companies going to go for live peer over Twitch or YouTube. How is live peer planning to overcome the network effect moats? In substance, what is live peer edge over competitors? And is that edge large enough to overcome sector moats? This is a good question. The, the first thing you have to realize is that live peer is not like Twitch or YouTube because it's not a platform. Like you don't, you don't go on live peer to do your streaming. Like it's not the end user experience. It's just the infrastructure on the back end, right? So like Twitch, they don't do the, the transcoding. They, they most likely hand it off to like Amazon Web Services. So it's Amazon Web Services or, or um, maybe Google or someone else that's doing the actual transcoding work and then sending it to the end customer. Twitch is just the, U, the UI of Twitch. So live peer is the back end. It is not... Twitch or YouTube. Someone has to, else has to build the app that is going to use LivePeer. So something like decentralized social media 
or or those kind of things. Uh, the other questions about you know what is the edge over the competitors? Well, LivePeer is mostly built for Web three applications, so Web two already does like live streaming pretty good. I mean, look, I'm on I'm on YouTube right now live streaming, and they already have a pretty good system. Uh, LivePeer could be cheaper, like it could be up to 10x cheaper, which is great. But I don't think being cheaper is the only benefit you get from LivePeer because it's not really going to be enough to bring over the Web2 people, like the Facebooks and the YouTubes. The real proposition, two real propositions, I think, with LivePeer. One is it is decentralized. It's truly decentralized uh, live streaming. So if a live stream, if a if a social media, decentralized social media app comes out, they have to use decentralized tools to run the network. Otherwise, it's not decentralized, right? Like if you have a decentralized app, then you need to have decentralized file sharing or file storage. So it'd be like file coin. And you need to have decentralized uh, video streaming, which is live peer. Because otherwise, if you decentralized app, but all your files are hosted at Amazon, that is centralized, well, they can still cancel you, right? Or if all your live streaming is done through the Amazon or Google servers, then again, they can just shut off your live stream. The key about live peer is that it's decentralized from the beginning, which is the whole Web3 movement. So you're gonna, yeah, you, it, it's, it's gonna be built more for Web3 applications. And then the other question is the moat of like, you know, there's Theta out there which is interesting. They do something similar to LivePeer, except they're basically centralized and they have patents. So I don't know how you can be a decentralized coin and app if you have patents, which is what Theta is. So, but they're a little more built out, I think. So kind of depends. So yeah, I don't know. And then uh, the, there's a whole article I wrote on the future of LivePeer, which is like uh, what what is... Live peer essentially, which is just GPUs connected around the world, and they can do more tasks than just transcoding, right? They can do AI image recognition and and uh, different different uh, tasks. So it's not just video, but it's uh, like it's not just live streaming, but it could be video image recognition software that could use live peer as well. So there's a there's a lot of different things that could happen, and uh, live peer is still an emerging technology. So there's still lots to uh, lots to cover. So, but anyway, those were uh, a couple of questions that I saw in Discord and Telegram. I figured I would hop on here and and answer them. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below, and I can get to them in another live stream that I'll be doing later. And um, please subscribe, like the video, and let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you so much for watching.